and welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Bryant alongside Melissa McFerrin, women's basketball coach at the University of Memphis. And coach out to a 2-2 two two Conference USA start so far this season. We're going to recap a couple of games. But overall, 2-2, two two, uh, obviously you'd like to be 3-1, 4-0. and one, four and oh. uh, You've played a couple of the contenders so far uh, in this conference season. No doubt about it. And um, we talk a lot about winning every game at home and sneaking a couple on the road. Um, we felt like we missed an opportunity at Houston to get a win on the road, losing by three. Of course, our other loss to Tulane. Going to Tulane, as we know, is a difficult place to play. They're always going to be a conference contender, but very, very happy to have our wins at home against Southern Miss and East Carolina. Let's go back to East Carolina, the most recent home game, a 66-56 grinded out win, and it was a defensive battle uh, at the Elmer Field Fieldhouse. You jumped out on them, I believe, by eight pretty early. They stormed back, take a seven-point lead in the locker room, but you were able to get a little bit of space in the second half. We were. The East Carolina is a difficult team to prep for, particularly with a young team. Running Princeton offense, the screens come in places that um, you're not always certain where they're coming from because, of course, they drill that every day, and we, we defend it one time a year. So we, uh, we were pretty good at hitting screens in the first half and giving up a few layups. I also thought offensive rebounding in the first half was big for, for East Carolina. I complimented our team at halftime because I thought that probably was the best mental adjustment that they've made probably all season long to get prepared for a second half. And we came out, turned them over a little bit, figured out their screening action, and, and went away with a pretty good win. Freshman class played big in that game. Uh, obviously, Bill Keyes, a redshirt junior, Nicole, they're steady. But you take a look at, at Ariel Hearn, a two-time freshman of the week. Jamie Jackson's kind of become your defensive special. She didn't have huge numbers because that's not a position you get a lot of numbers in. But she had, I believe, six points, four for four at the free throw line, the free throw line late. And Ajana Fuqua Bay, who's been a freshman of the week once this year as well. Absolutely. And those freshmen, we recruited them saying, we're going to need you to play immediately. And they've come in. And they've really helped solidify our team. You can't can't normally rely on that many freshmen and night in and night out have an expectation that you can win basketball games but I think we can because I think first of all we have Nicole Dixon who is who was our mainstay Kesey is our returning point guard but then Ariel Hearn has been a highlight show at times particularly offensively and as we get her more and more solid defensively she, we'll begin to see her um, really solidify her game Right now, she's helping us more on the offensive end than not on the defensive end. Jamie Jackson is the other way around. She helps us a lot on defense and rebounding, um, not so much on the offensive end. But those two players are critical for our success. And then Asiana Fuqua Bay, has, she has been the little workhorse. Um, defense, rebounding, catching passes on the interior, getting on the offensive glass, and giving us scoring um, in ways that don't require play calls. Asiana Fuqua Bay not only has kind of emerged as a, a scorer for you down in the post, but to be honest, I mean, to be frank, she, she's your most consistent post player as a freshman out playing some of the upperclassmen right now. She is, and that's, that's a concern. We love that for Asia, but I've said this probably for a month now. We've got to get Sonnen and, and rolling. And Asia right now is giving us production off of just effort and energy and doing fundamental things. Right now, um, Ann and Sana aren't quite giving us as, as much and they're making more mistakes defensively. But I've said this all along, I love it that Asia's ready to go, but we need a more um, physical low post presence a as we go down the stretch here. We've got to have some production from our fives, but take nothing away from Asia. She has really earned that spot. You turn around, you go back on the road to face Tulane, one of the uh, premier programs in this league. I believe they've been in half the finals, half the championship ball games, and Lisa Stockton does a tremendous job down there. You were in the game, just couldn't seem to get into that, that next gear, a 72-62 loss. Nicole Dixon had another 30-point game, but other than that, they are able to kind of really affect your shooters. Well, they, they had a great game plan. Um, we played against a set zone defense mm -hmm. the entire night. You and I say, uh, um, have said for many, many years that most of the time we execute sets well enough against a zone that we can pull people out of that and go back to what we do best, which is penetrate and drive and, and run. Um, Tulane took us out of that. We had a little bit of um, miscommunication in some of our sets. We didn't get the scoring out of those things that we normally get. And so therefore we played against that set zone defense the entire evening. I also felt like that in the second half, we came back with some defensive energy. I was imploring our players to be more committed to our full court defense. 
when we did that, we came back, tied the score in the second half. And I don't think there's any question that the flagrant foul that was called on Lauren McGraw maybe was warranted, maybe wasn't. In any event, we went to that end of the floor tied. We leave that end of the floor down six and with five to go. And so that was really a turning point in the game. Well, we talk about this team being on an even kill, uh, not real high, not real low on wins and losses, or if it's going well or, or not going well. It wasn't very visible, but you could see, especially the, the underclassmen, the freshmen, a little frustrated at Tulane just because they weren't shooting well that night because of the, maybe the zone the entire ball game just kind of got into them a little bit. Well, it, it slows our tempo down, and mm -hmm. that's uh, we're not accustomed to playing 20, 25, 30 seconds on the offensive end of the floor. That's not our system. That's not our style. And so we've got to work really hard to maintain our tempo when the other team has, has decided to zone us up. So some of that still rests in our hands because I thought we at times didn't run as hard, didn't get through our secondary nearly as quickly as we typically do, and we became very lethargic. We're also a team that we're used to generating a little bit of um, offense from our defense. We didn't get some of that easy stuff. Um, Nicole comes up with 31, 50% of our, our 62 total. That number's a little off. We need a little bit more scoring. Um, uh, Kesey and Ariel really struggled from the field, and, and therefore our team str struggled. Well, Coach, again, as we said, you said at 2-2 two and two in the league, you're going to go to another tough place to win. Uh, UAB, they were picked in the top four this year. Uh, this has been a rivalry game other than Southern Miss, probably the biggest rival uh, going back in the Conference USA days, even a little bit before that. But they're out to a 3-0 and start. Uh, they're, they're a half game out of first place behind SMU, who's 4-0. and That's the only reason. They're even in the loss column of no losses. And they have come off a win in El Paso, and everyone in the league knows how tough it is to win in El Paso. Oh, my goodness. That is a huge win for UAB um, at, at UTEP. Of course, that's the tiebreaker game now. Right. So UAB really holds um, the, a full deck of cards in terms of uh, what that's going to mean going down the stretch. But that's a very difficult place to play. But UAB is in the conference, in the three games in the conference, they are allowing their opponents only to shoot 25% from the field. That is a huge number. They're only giving up 46 points in the conference season. So when you play UAB, you have got to be um, very resilient because they're going to keep you from scoring. It's important that you control your mindset. Don't, don't get down. Uh, we, want, we want the game to be low scoring, but not that low. We've right. got to be able to put a few points on the board. But UAB, very, very difficult um, defensive team to manage. And honestly, led by Amber Jones, their great senior guard, Charisma Chapman, who's a junior now playing three, four spot. But I really believe that their team is, uh, they go as Amber Jones goes. And she's a senior and she's on a mission. That's Thursday night at 7 o'clock at Bartow Arena, but you mentioned Chab and you, you mentioned Jones. It always seems like they have these familiar names that have been around forever. They're a lot like the, you have been because you had a Ramses Lon like played for four years. Now you've got these freshmen that everyone's going to hear about for four years that they can play some youth, and they're one of the teams in the league that don't mind, as you mentioned, running up down the floor with you. They, they don't mind it. Um, they have had young players. Uh, they suffered through a couple years with those young players, but didn't suffer badly, suffered right. in the middle of the pack. And now that as those players have aged, they've, they've risen to the top. They're a, they're a tough-minded defensive team. They're a pick-and-roll offense team. They're also running Philly spread, which is a difficult um, offense to manage when they've got shooters and penetrators, which they do. And they have just done a wonderful job uh, growing up into a very junior and senior-laden team, and, and they're showing the signs of senior leadership. Well, the one, one thing you have to look forward to when you go to Birmingham is usually you get to see some blue in the stands. You had some, a lot of blue in the stands with you at Tulane. Uh, took a big traveling party. But when you go to UAB, you have a lot of alumni that played down there. Ashley Thornton, you, you met Victoria Crawford, Jasmine Lee's from around that area. So there always seems to be some blue in the stands when you go to Birmingham. We do. We get some families there, even if they're not of current players. And some of the people from Memphis make the trip down there. So there aren't very many Conference USA away games where I can look behind the bench and, and see some friendly faces, but uh, we certainly did at Tulane with the people that, that traveled with us with the Fast Break Club and then at UAB. So it'll be a welcome sight to have them behind our bench. And then just to touch quickly, UCF Sunday at 2 o'clock at the Elmer Field Fieldhouse. I haven't really looked that far ahead because you've got that big game with UAB, but it'll be good to be back home Sunday. No doubt about it. We'll, we're now uh, going into game two on the road. That's 
that's uh, it's always it's always nice to get home when you spent two or three games on the road. We know that this is a league that most people win very very well at home and not so much on the road like any other league in the country. So um, we're going to go to UAB with a mission to win one on the road. Uh, win or lose, though, we'll be happy to come back. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks, Jeff. That is Head Coach Melissa McFerrin. I'm Jeff Brightwell for the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network. Thank you.